President Sassoon Gwesu yesterday said at the dinner, a hundred billion dollars was promised per year. And he was saying, I've never seen that. And many of us will testify that that hundred billion dollars has, has never really been made available. And this should stand out as something that needs to be addressed. Because sometimes we sit at conferences like this and say, yes, we'll make this available, this available, and we believe you. We believe you, but now the tire must hit the tar. We must now see action flowing from that. Now, I want to then talk about something very practical. President Sassoon Gwesu raised it yesterday. He said he would be happy if flowing from this summit, we do something very practical. So I want us to watch this video together because I think it's very important. This was the speech made by the President of South Africa, Sivi Ramaphosa. Like usual, when we are watching, I will stop it from time to time to share my opinions on what he was saying. And you can also do the same in the comment section below. Because remember, this is a conversational show. We are all here to share our thoughts and opinions on the things that are most important to us. So, without further ado, let's watch. Uh, let me start off by saying, uh, President Lula, don't worry. When we have the BRICS meeting, the issue of currency is top on the agenda. So we are going to discuss it. President Macron, I just want to start off on a very positive note in terms of what I think is evolving here. I think there is consensus that is clearly embraced by everyone that we need to address climate and poverty uh, because they go together, there's an excess. And as it were, we need to burn the candle on both sides. So that's important, so that's agreed. And we all recognize and accept that we need capital at scale to address the key challenges. You know, there, there is too many of this summit, right? And the, I just wish that things could get moving after this summit. Because um, what I personally have realized is that these leaders come together in a summit and they talk and they talk and they talk. And after the summit, you hardly see anything that has been done that was discussed in the summit or anything that was supposed to be done being done. At least for Africa, I can say that. So one might begin to think that Sometimes these summits are just a waste of time. But then again, one might argue that the summits are necessary because there are the place where people can share ideas, where leaders can meet and talk about their difficulties and challenges. Be it as it may, I just hope that when our leaders go to this summit and have these talks with their fellow counterpart, they should come home and uh, put words to action. They should come home and start doing what they promised to do. But let's continue. That many countries in the world face, particularly the developing economy countries, and we also would be agreed that there needs to be more cooperation and coordination between your development banks, multilateral development banks and the private sector. Uh, there needs to be coordination so that there is no fragmentation, which you kept talking about. But I think what is important to many of us is that there should be solid 
consensus on the reform of the financial architecture of the world. Because without that reform, the dreams and the objectives that we have to address our challenges will not be realized. And that ref those reforms need to touch on a whole range of issues. Mr. Mo Ibrahim yesterday even spoke about something that we may think is insignificant, that the boards of directors of your multilateral institutions are not made up of independent directors. They are largely internal people or shareholders. So that in itself, for us, it's an important reform. Uh, we also need to look at the distribution of the special drawing rights. Uh, I, I find it a bit difficult to be told that this is set in the rules and it will forever be like that and that it's either you get zero or you get 34 billion. In our view, this is not a zero-sum game. It's a game where we all need to be dealt with with equity uh, in an equitable manner. And there is a need for reform in that regard as well. And the other important thing for this to happen, uh, it will help us not to participate as unequal cousins in these institutions. It will help us to participate fully and uh, so that we don't have a sense that we are beggars, that we are being dealt with uh, out of generosity. <laughs> Whenever I hear an African leader talks about equality, Whenever I hear them talk about being equal or wanting to be equal or asking for the West to treat them like an equal, it always made me laugh because I begin to think that they do not know where they are living, that they are not living in a reality. Maybe they are living in a fantasy world. That is why they will begin to ask the West to treat them fairly or as an equal. Now, my point of laughing is not because they want to be treated equal. No, that's not why I'm laughing. The reason why I'm laughing is because they have not done anything in order for them to be treated as equal. That's my point. If you want someone to treat you like an equal, you must prove yourself to them. You must be able to do things that people can see and acknowledge that, yes, this person who wants to be treated as an equal deserve to be treated as an equal. You cannot just go begging for aid. You cannot just go around borrowing money. You cannot just go around asking for donations and handouts. You cannot be a country in Africa that France is propping your economy. Whenever your economy is in trouble, France comes in and prop it up for you. You cannot be a country in Africa that cannot even determine or cannot even dictate your own policies. France has to do that for you, whether voluntarily or by force is immaterial, but they have to do it for you. So you cannot just lie there not doing anything significant and then just get up and start telling people to treat you like an equal. That has always been my point. We Africans must do things that would let people treat us with respect. Because like I have always said on this particular show, respect is being earned, not given. You must earn people's respect. If you want them to treat you as an equal, do things that let them know you deserve to be treated as an equal. Not just saying that you want to treat as an equal, but actually doing things that will make people treat you like an equal. That's my whole point. So let's continue. I think it's important in the new era that the world is in now that uh, there should be a good measure of equality among sovereign nations. You know, recently, uh, seven African countries uh, decided to go 
to go and put a call for peace to Ukraine and to Russia. And we raised a number of issues. Uh, Zambia was represented, Comoros was represented, uh, Republic of Congo was represented, Senegal was represented, Uganda, uh, as well as South Africa. So we were all represented, and Egypt as well. So we were all at one, that even as we were going to address an issue of the war which has had a negative impact on the African continent, which is the rise in prices for food, rise in prices for fertilizers, we were clear that we are not going there as beggars. We are not going to ask for a favor to both Ukraine and Russia. We were going there to say, open up the Black Sea Channel so that the, sea, uh, the, the, the grains and the fertilizers should go into the world market. So we were not on a begging mission, even as we are in great need as a continent and all that. That should go to demonstrate that Africa is, should never be seen as a continent that needs generosity. We want to be treated as equals. Even in the multilateral institutions, we want to be treated as equals. And if our equity is at a low ebb, there must be ways in which that can be addressed. To us, this is very important. Our sovereignty is one of the things that we hold on dearly to. <laughs> Yeah, but you can defend yourself that you are not a beggar or you guys were not beggars or your purpose of going to Ukraine was not to look like a beggar. You can say all those things, but people say, okay, <laughs> if you think that way, then good and fine. <laughs> but that doesn't change the perception we have about you. You will still know you guys are beggars. So whatever you say, <laughs> anyone to their own. But coming back about this whole food thing, do you know it's strange, right, that Africa with all their fertile soil, right, Africa with all their good soil for agriculture still, begs, um, still goes around begging for food. You know, we could cultivate crop in Africa. We could grow our own food in Africa. But I do not know why we are not focusing on growing our own food in Africa. We are just focusing on exploring raw minerals and then shipping them abroad. That's all what we do in Africa. We need to start growing our own food. We need to start being able to take care of our people, to feed our people, because we have the potential to grow food in Africa. But let's continue. And we demonstrated that very clearly to both President Zelensky and to President Putin when it came to this issue. Even as there were suggestions that, yes, we can donate this, we can donate that, we said, we want you to release these grains and fertilizers to the world market so that the world can trade in these commodities and other issues we can handle in a different way. I wanted to make that point so that it should be understood where Africa has evolved up to. We want to be key players on the world stage, want to be key players even in the financial uh, markets and uh, in the MDBs. Now, these are the positive things. I do, Mr. Uh, President Macron, want us to address another issue which to us is a bit of a negative. Uh, you will have heard President Sisi talking about the 100 billion that was promised in Paris. President Sassou yesterday as well also spoke about it at the dinner. Now, there is that issue that a number of the commitments that have been made 
have not really been fully lived up to. But before I get into details, let me immediately say that we recognize the many initiatives that have been put on the table, and a number of countries here have done so. Germany has gone out of the way to put a number of initiatives, and uh, the U.S. has also done a number of things. But there have been times when we felt like we were beggars. I played a key role as chair of uh, the African Union during the COVID period. We felt like we were beggars when it came to vaccine availability, when we felt we needed access to vaccines, and the Northern Hemisphere countries had bought all the vaccines in the world, and they were hogging them. And they didn't want to release them at the time when we needed them most. And we felt like we were begging. And at times it felt like they would just be droppings from the table, that yes, we will give you that and that. And let me tell you something that, that generated a lot of resentment. We, we, we resented that, and it got worse when we said we want to manufacture our own vaccines. And when we went to the WTO, there was a lot of resistance, enormous resistance. And we kept saying, what is more important, life or profits by your big pharmaceutical companies? And that too, I must tell you now, generated and deepened that disappointment and resentment on our part because we felt like life in the Northern Hemisphere is much more important than life in the Global South. Well, let me help CV. Ramaphosa uh, answered this question. He asks, which is more important, life or profit? Well, if he doesn't know profit, <laughs> he would think that someone like him, who is a leader of a, a great country like South Africa, would have known this by now, that <laughs> those big or mega corporations don't care about the individual life. They don't care about it. They care about making so much profit for themselves, for their shareholders, and for their board of directors. So let me say it again. Life or profit? Which one is more important? Siri, profit. <laughs> and <laughs> he keep on saying we are not beggars, we are not beggars, we are not beggars. And uh, keep on asking the West for almost every single thing, which is kind of funny. <laughs> we don't want to look like we are beggars. But we needed this thing, and you guys did not give it to us. We don't want to look like we are beggars, but we wanted to do this thing, and you guys said, no, we cannot do it. Why would you need permission from them to do things if you are an independent country or entity? Why would you ask them for vaccines? Africans couldn't do their own vaccines. I mean, the whole of Africa, the AU, couldn't come up with a scheme to put together a group of scientists that are going to work on a vaccine for Africa. That's the thing with us, the Africans. We are lazy and we are full of complaining. We wanted this, you guys did not give it to us. We wanted that, you guys said no. You guys made us look like beggars. Of course. That is because you guys are beggars. <laughs> no one is making you look like a beggar. No one is doing that. You are doing it to yourself. 100 million was placed on the table, but you guys did not get it. What was the money for? Wasn't it for aid and donations? And now you guys are complaining that you guys did not get the money that was promised to you guys. What does that signify? You guys are beggars. If you guys are not beggars, you guys will not be hanging on a failed promise. No, you guys would have let it go. But you guys had your hopes hooked on that aid money. And when it didn't come true, you guys were crutch. And that is why you guys are so angry about it. And there's a lot of resentment has been built up around it. 
if only you guys have come up with plans to be self-sufficient, if only you guys have come up with plans to better up your respective countries in Africa, if only you guys have start, stopped embezzling government funds and in, instead investing it in your countries, if only you guys have looked around your country and figured out what your country has got to offer to the rest of the world and make very good use of it, you wouldn't be sitting here lashing out about not being able to get what was promised to you. They can make whatever promise they want to make. And most of the times, they do not need to come through with those promises. So why have your hope on something that you might never get? Africa has got to sit up. Africa has got to wake up. Africa has got to understand that the West will never take them seriously if they do not take themselves seriously. And I have been saying this a lot on this show. Africa has got to start doing things that the West will view them as an equal partner. Africa has got to put their feet on the ground and start doing things that shows strength. Until that day come, Africa will be a beggar in the eyes of the West. Let's continue. And these are issues that need to be addressed. And I'm glad that we are all seated here like this because we've got to get to the heart of these matters and address them. Now, I come to promises that have been made. And Chancellor Schultz was saying, Schultz was saying, we, we've got to walk the talk. Yes, we want to see the talk being walked. President Sassou Nguesu yesterday said at the dinner, a hundred billion dollars was promised per year. And he was saying, I've never seen that. And many of us will testify that that hundred billion dollars has, has never really been made available. And this should stand out as something that needs to be addressed. Because sometimes we sit at conferences like this and say, yes, we'll make this available, this available, and we believe you. We believe you, but now the tire must hit the tar. We must now see action flowing from that. Now, I want to then talk about something very practical. <laughs> Pardon my laughter. <laughs> it's so funny to see Siri Ramaphosa really pouring out his heart and soul. <laughs> and Marcon is like, oh God, can this guy just get along? <laughs> can, they get, can this guy just get it rolling? You believe them. You be really? You believe them? I wouldn't believe them, and I am a nobody. What about you, a leader of a country? Why would you believe the West? Why would you think that the West is ever going to come through with whatever they promise? Why would you even be hoping <laughs> for something from the West? <laughs> like if they've ever done something to you guys, that does not benefit them. If the West is giving one dollar to Africa, they know a way of getting the one dollar back plus interest. I mean, they are hoping to get like three dollars back, back from Africa. If the West is putting a thousand dollars in a program in Africa, they know what they are doing. It's not just for the Africans. You know, I realized this when I started doing this show and I started doing a lot of research. They are aid, they are donations, they are handouts, they are uh, loans, and so on and so forth. All these things are not for the benefit of Africa. It's just so that Africa can be where it is and they can keep on harvesting from Africa. So let no one fool you that the West are a charitable entity that wants to see that want to see Africa grow and prosper 
let no one fool you. Okay, if someone told you that, they lied to you. The West very much like where Africa is and will hope Africa stays that way. Because let's face it, while rock the boat, if you are having a smooth sailing in the ocean, why rock the boat? Just let it sail. That is why the West have gone as far as possible to put in place puppet leaders who they can control. The West has done everything possible to ensure that the leaders in Africa are so corrupt that the people don't even like them. That the leaders in Africa are so brutal that will use whatever force necessary to suppress their own people. The West is supporting authoritarian leaders in Africa, dictators in Africa, terrians in Africa. They support all those leaders. They give them aid, they prop up their government, they tell them how to handle civil unrest, how to crack down on the people hard. You've witnessed the protests in France, right? You saw how the French police handled the protesters in a very calm, nice, and gentle way. They let the people protest. But have you ever seen a protest in a French-speaking country in Africa? Have you ever seen how the protesters are being handled by security forces? Oh my God, you pity. You will pity the people. So you think the West want the best for Africa? You would think that? If there's one thing they have done is to ensure that we do not progress and our naive and uh, backward leaders have collaborated with the West to keep us where we are. They have enabled the West steal everything from us. And look at where we are now. We have nothing to show for it. Even though we are the richest continent in the whole world, we are the poorest in terms of development, in terms of healthcare, in terms of human capital, in terms of every single thing you could ever think of. We are the worst. So it's such a pity that Sri Ramaphosa and his colleagues believed the West when they told them they would give them a hundred million dollars. I can I, I I bet most of them were already pricing properties in Europe to buy with the money. <laughs> They've already sent their 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 real estate agent to start looking for properties in Europe for them to buy with the money. Because remember, all these aid and donations do not benefit the poor people. They've, they've never trickled down to the grassroots people. Never. It has always ended at the top. When these aid and donations get into the country, the political elite celebrate with it. They embezzle everything and they use it to buy properties in the West a.k.a. France. And France knows about all these properties in their countries being bought by African dictators. And France understands how the people in those African countries are suffering. But yesterday, they welcomed the leaders buying properties in France, having huge bank accounts in French banks. And they do nothing about it. So what does that tell you? But let's continue. President Sassou Nguesu raised it yesterday. He said he would be happy if flowing from this summit, we do something very practical on the infrastructure side. Having said that 600 million people in Africa do not have electricity, and yet we've got all the resources to generate electricity particularly the mighty Congo River, and that there have been plans to build a number of power stations that will generate, in my calculation, up to 70,000 megawatts. And he said, and I want to speak in support of this proposal, that to prove that these summits are not summits where we just talk, 
flowing from the Paris uh, COP as well as others. Let us now put money on the table and collectively say we are going to address this mega project. A mega project which will in the end generate electricity for up to 12, 15 African countries all at one go. And this is a project that I think the multilateral development banks here working together the call that you've made, President Macron, can actually fund. And where, as we rise from this, we should be able to say the Inga Dam is now going to be developed into the Inga Power Station, the one that President Sasungwesu mentioned, and the next one as well. If we can do that, then we as Africans will now be convinced that these summits are really meaningful. We will now go home and say, you know what, it's worthwhile going to these summits, coming to Europe, and to listen to all the promises because they are willing to act on the promises. This is what President Macron, I believe, will be one of the most important outcomes. The reform of the financial architecture, as well as a practical project, infrastructure project that is going to uh, add a lot of value. President Sisi and I have been talking about a, a, a railway from Cape Town to Cairo for years. We will leave that for the next uh, summit, but the one on generating electricity and building uh, power stations on the Inga Dam is the most important that is immediate that I believe needs to be addressed now. Let's get that done and then we will be convinced that you are serious with the promises that you make. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't want to sound like a downer. I don't want to sound like a dream killer, but I will have to say with all certainty that nothing will be done. The so-called Inga Dam will never be built by the French. Why should they do that? It doesn't serve their interest. Talking about all these projects in Africa, right? Isn't it the job of the AU to figure this out? Isn't it the job of, of the AU to mobilize the 54 countries in Africa to do this? You know, it's so funny to see that more too often, our leaders are only hoping for the West to do things for them. This comes back to my same problem of people asking for others to treat them like an equal, whereby they cannot shoulder the responsibility of an equal. If you want someone to treat you as an equal, you must be able to show that certain responsibilities that comes with being an equal. I have never seen France asking South Africa to build a dam for them. I have never heard of France going to South Africa to ask them to build a railway or to build anything for them. I have never heard of it. That is because France does not view South Africa as an equal. That's what, that is why France cannot ask them for anything. France views South Africa as a junior brother, if I may put it that way, or as someone who is beneath them. So if South Africa is saying that they don't want to be seen as someone who is beneath the French, they want to be seen as an equal, and in the same statement, asking for the West to build a railway in Egypt or a dam in the Congo. What are they really talking about? You should ask yourself this question. Shouldn't Congo figure this out for themselves? Because after all, Congo is also asking for them to be treated as an equal, for them to have a seat on the table. On one hand, 
you are asking for the so-called right and respect that you deserve. And on the other hand, you are saying they should do things for you. How can you claim to be an equal? How can you claim you deserve to be treated as an equal? And on the other hand, someone has to help you with stuff. How does that really play out? And this is the point I have been making. The Inga Dam in the Congo is a very, very significant project that will create a lot of energy in the whole of Africa. But Africa, with its 54 member states, are unable to come together to sit on the table to discuss about how to build this dam by themselves. What is the African Development Bank doing? Isn't it their job to put together the different member states in Africa and negotiate a way through? They won't do it. They will rather run to the West and ask them for aid and donation and call them out for not giving them the aid they promised to give to them. It's like that friend, Joe, who never lets you sleep when you didn't give what you promised him. <laughs> he goes around telling every person that you made a promise and failed. <laughs> It makes it look like the promise was a dead, not a promise. <laughs> if I promise to give you something, okay, and uh, the promise just fell apart, well, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. It was just a promise. <laughs> it wasn't a debt that you must collect. It wasn't a debt. It was just a promise. So you cannot go out lashing, telling every single person you meet that I made a promise and I didn't come through with it. <laughs> this is so funny. But you guys out there, what is your take on Africa's perception of being an equal? Do you really think that Africa is really ready to become an equal? Can anyone say they are an equal to someone who takes care of them? Can you even imagine someone saying that they are, they are your equal while you do every single thing for them? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because due to the tough good we, and the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one.